my recently published book Play to Potential, published by Penguin, I talk about the framework flavor, where we can all lead a multidimensional life. And in that context, I've profiled six different people who I believe are striving to play to their full potential and leading a flavorful life. This conversation is with one of them, Soma Biswas Vajpai. I've known Soma for more than 27 years. She and her husband Bhavtosh were both classmates in IIM Ahmedabad. I must confess I did not know her very well then. But over the years, I've become a big fan of how she has adapted and thrived as they've moved different locations because of Bhavtosh's career. Very often I hear people use the word trailing spouse to describe when they move, when the husband has to move to a different location. But Shoma has shown how to thrive despite all these constraints. If I have to capture her approach to life in a phrase, it would be, if life throws a lemon at you, try and make a mojito out of it. In our conversation, Shoma talks about how she's conquered some of the demons from her childhood, has gone on an inner journey to discover what she truly wants. And over time, she's found her calling and she now operates at the intersection of passion and purpose where she's an arts-based therapist in New York. Without further ado, let's dive into the conversation with Shoma and I hope you walk away as inspired as I am. Shoma, thanks so much for making the time uh, to have this conversation with us. Uh, I know we you know, we go back 27 years now. I think uh, we, we have the Silver Jubilee reunion coming up in December. And it's it's lovely to uh, reconnect in this context. Um, I think for the purpose of the listeners, uh, maybe a good place to start, Shoma, is just to talk a little bit about where you are, what you do, a little bit of context of your current situation. And then, of course, we can, we can sort of take it from there. Sure. And DJ, listen, this is my pleasure. Um, and I, I think it's also a, a, you know, wonderful opportunity for me to like kind of um, at this juncture, you know, uh, reaching uh, 50, uh, kind of reassessing my life through your uh, flavorful questions. Sure. So yeah, it's my pleasure as well. Um, to give you a sense of where I am at now, um, I am in New York. I'm living in New York with my family, three kids, uh, my husband. Um, I have one who's going to college in Purdue in second year and another in 11th grade and my daughter. So two boys, older boys, and my daughter is in um, seventh grade. So that's that's my family. Bhavtosh works at uh, Oppenheimer, um, now called Invesco, and he is uh, on the fund management side. So we have been mm -hmm. living in New York for about five years now. And in the last uh, three years, um, I have kind of, it's my second innings in my career, um, where I have um, done a master's in art therapy um, mm. and um, at NYU. Uh, New York University. I've got my license to work as a mental health professional in New York. Um, I work at uh, two places now. Uh, one is I'm at a I'm a child therapist at uh, at Scarsdale Edgemont Family Counseling Services, which is a, a local um, family council uh, practice here in the in the town I live in. So I'm kind of a part of the community in service of uh, children needing mental health support. Um, and I'm also a weekend creative art therapist at a hospital, local hospital, which uh, caters to, I'm in the inpatient psychiatric unit. Uh, and I do groups for people with deeper psycho psychosis issues, um, schizophrenia, you know, you know, uh, um, substance use, um, you know, schizoaffective and, you know, kind of more chronic um, psychosis uh, that they, you know, maybe. Mm -hmm. that they may so that's where I am at right now. Wow. And so sort of, uh, you know, if I sort of rewind 27 years for a mm -hmm. grad coming out of IMA and to yeah. say one would be doing this, it's, it's a uh, it's it's a fascinating journey. Uh, I think before we get here, uh, Shoma, I find it helpful to rewind the clock. I feel, you know, we are uh, we are a, uh, in a way we are like an iceberg, right? We are accumulation of all our life experiences, starting from our childhood. I'd mm -hmm. love to know uh, if you if you were to rewind the clock and and think about the first 15, 20 years, 
Can you talk a little bit about how you were shaped uh, by the by the context uh, you grew up in and how that defined your operating system, if you will? I mean, that, that was sort of, in a way, one piece I want to explore, but also maybe subsequently we could talk to uh, uh, talk a little bit about some of the choices you might have made but let's let's start with childhood yeah um i like the operating system i think now that i understand a, a bit more about you know the the theories and you know the the neurological impact of what really growing up initial years mm. you know how it helps in the brain development the regulation and uh, finally, like, you know, how you react to things. I feel like this is the most crucial part in in our lives, really, DJ. So I think it's a good part to start. And also, I think mm. for me particularly, this has been the most difficult part of my life, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> though I think I have... I have worked over it, uh, you know, all these years. So it's, it's got a little easier to talk about it. Um, my, um, so I grew up with um, parents. My dad is, uh, um, he's retired now, but he was a doctor at, uh, he was a gynecologist in a steel authority of India in a small um, sale township called Durgapur. And my mother is a homemaker. Um, much to our, um, you know, um, I would say um, um, discomfort. They had a very disgruntled and unhappy marriage uh, to the point that it was uh, violent um, and a lot of physical and verbal abuse. Um, and that was a way of life. Um, but I'm grateful. I think I had a lot of multiple protective factors um, that helped me kind of go through that. Um, I had a best friend's home where I practically lived. I had wonderful teachers who actually motivated me to study. And um, I had an art teacher who kind of got me into, I wouldn't say my search of creativity, but, you know, more into like the rigor of art. Um, mm. and, um, I think there was, uh, because of the um, innocence of growing in the child, you know, kind of growing up in a small town, knowing the people. I feel like I had a, I had a village that I could hmm. back on. This is all looking back, not while I was growing up, because I was pretty um, determined about my, um, you know, um, need to leave home behind. So hmm. at 15, I, I left, you know, the comfort of a, I can't say a safe home, but, you know, a home. And I went into new pastures. I went to Pune to study, mm. um, you know, from 11th grade. And I, I look back and I see I was all of Vibhu's age, my my middle son's mm. age when I left home. And so you can imagine for, you know, for a middle class, um, you know, young girl to leave home and be, it was a whole world of learning to be, you know, independent at a different level, you know, learning to navigate um, mm. friends and teachers and, you know, like your own, you know, how do you, how do you keep yourself like focused when you have so much of distraction? So I think that that was a whole new learning, which um, again, must have, uh, mm. you know, kind of, Helped me come of age uh, at that mm. time. So mm. I stayed in Pune for a really long time, about six years. I did my first year even in Pumba where uh, I got the chance to reappear for I'm I am like to the cat and then mm -hmm. then I come into mm. I'm and that's where so yeah I think um yes I think seeing my mother struggle with her relationship and marriage and being financially independent mm. that was one of my core motivations to gain my financial independence so forget my mm. you know anybody in my family telling me to do anything with art it was I wouldn't allow myself the dalliance you know to to follow what my passion even if it was art I was mm. very focused on, you know kind of making money so and mm. it was the way, you know, mm. and my job to get into, you know, Citibank. So I feel the 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 creative aspiration really didn't start there, even though that's something that I always did. So mm. it was only after a decade that I really, you know, um, decade of 
working as a professional in the banking space, um, you know, and, and having my own family, you know, I got into life change. So. Of course, of course. And you, out of curiosity, did you have a, do you have a sibling, uh, Shoma? Uh, I do, I do. I do have a sibling and I think um, she, I feel like there's a guilt that I hold for um, leaving home because uh, she had to endure. She's four years younger to me. So I feel like she endured um, mm. being in the home. And that was the time when, when I left, my parents also separated. They mm. lived separately. So kind of, I felt like she endured. I was like very happy to kind of leave home, but I left her behind. Um, so I think that's a part that I had to work out with her. And I feel like we found our separate separate, mm. unique journey to heal from within. I don't think so. We supported each other. Mm. And like, you know, the, the, you know, to heal all that scar of the mind and heart, like, I think that takes a lot of time. And uh, I think I feel like now I feel I'm, I do this as a profession, but mm. I feel like it kind of borrows from my own life and my mm. own learning. You can't really get into this profession without having so I feel like you know gratitude for what has happened rather than that that victim that I was mm. when it was mm. happening mm. so mm. yeah but it has it has threatened my you know I think the definition of you know defining it it, it could have defined me or you know like my self-worth I mean there were times it was the lowest time so I think you kind of work through it. It could have gone both ways. For me, I can, again, look at 30,000 feet above and say, I, I made this happen. But, mm. you know, that's why I said there was, that you need the protective protective layers. Um, mm. And mm. You kind of whatever life throws, whatever coping skills, I kind of put it in my toolbox. Mm. And they still... Mm. 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 It's interesting. You, uh, uh, we'll we'll probably talk more about it uh, as as the conversation progresses. You know, uh, you had a passion for art even at that stage, but one didn't have the, if I may say, the luxury. I think, uh, given your childhood, I guess the the need for financial independence was even even yeah. more pronounced. So, yes. uh, um, yeah. But art has always, you know, because you point to art. It has always, even though it wasn't my avenue for like financial uh, gains, I think mm. it was all my sanctuary of healing because mm. I think that realm of colors and forms, the creative process, you know, the language of self-expression, that's where mm. my catharsis, my balm was. So mm. I feel like not, what I did for myself, again, I think it connects to what I do with others. Fascinating. But Fascinating. I, you know, I think it's the it's the learning process over all these, I think, I don't know, 45 years that mm -hmm. it, you know, that that got me to this point. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't drop art. Uh might be I might might not have done it as prolifically as I do now, but I never dropped mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's a great point, Shoma. I think uh yeah, sometimes just staying in touch with something uh, and it mm -hmm. can sort of blossom much later, right? But just sort of uh, not losing touch with something, there's just so much value in it. Yeah. Let's, uh, I think I'd love to sort of explore the different uh, domains of your life as things stand and along the way. But for the purpose of listeners, it might just be helpful to get a sense of the key, some of the key choices you might have made in your journey, right? Let's say childhood, now you're an IMA, that's where we met. Can you talk a little bit of, let's say, IMA to now, if you just sort of look at it from a distance, hmm. what what would you say might be some of the key personal and professional choices you might have made uh, along the way? Um, I think there were many, um, but I think I'm just trying to mm. kind of to the bucket of, um, you know, meeting, meeting my partner, uh, life partner at that point in IMA. So it kind of, the story starts right there. <laughs> we married quite um, early, uh, a year after, you know, graduating. It was more a financial decision, I would say, being in Bombay to have mm. like, you know, pay for one rent rather than two. <laughs> so um, I think um, we started our life together in, in Mumbai and, um, 
you know, we were we were very focused on our our um, I think um, our um, professional life at that beginning. It was mm. I think there were two ways. I remember we would live in the same house and you know still not meet meet each other because he had such long hours and you know mm. I was exhausted. So you know it was just that. Uh, but it was it was very focused on professional life. However, I think as in in another you know four years we kind of decided to you know I think the traditional route you know we thought started thinking about children and that's when I think life took a different turn and the focus kind of changed as a young mother. Hmm. You know, I think um, I still worked with two of my boys born hmm. uh, that about you know, three years apart, I continued working, but it was a struggle. Hmm. I think getting uh, help from home, suddenly, like from being an independent um, woman, you're like, you're, you're managing different things. And, you know, you have a certain idea that you have to, you know, run your home, you have a certain idea of how you're, you know, you want to take care of your children. And you want to be doing, I think that is just, I hmm. think this Except and the pressure that that women put on it just is the toughest to me when I look back that was the toughest period as uh as being a young mother um and you know the um the family telling you that you know you you know it's interesting that f when family told me that you know I was the one who's going to make a difference to all the children I should be making the sacrifice I was resentful mm. <laughs> but it makes sense and slowly I think what helped me kind of with that in an easier fashion make that transition is when uh, Bhavtosh uh, got a, a opportunity to move to um, to Hong Kong okay. with a larger larger role in the same organization mm -hmm. CLSA. so I think that was easier because for me it was like okay you know I will see how let's I think that that helped us restart uh, mm. with young family in a new place um uh, i at that point i was hopeful that i'll get another job but the way it panned out in hong kong was that you know language is a big barrier i did i tried so hmm. it gave me that that clean start interesting uh, explore um explore different avenues and that's when i i would say found uh, my love again I started painting as mm. a way of that that managing my transition mm. um, in new new place new um, new way of living and it gave me that space so I was I was uh, I, somehow it, I didn't mean to do it but I was I was outdoor a lot I was hiking a lot I was outdoor a lot and I would bring that into my art and I was painting a lot. And I also started my coaching career then. Mm -hmm. So I was able, it was intertwined. And I was almost coaching myself to let go of my fear of starting my, you know, even, even, you know, kind of, it was like coming out of the closet saying, I am an artist. I couldn't even mm. see that. Mm. You know, so, uh, if I'm an artist, what do I do? I exhibit really like, you know, mm. if somebody out there you know will want to hang my paintings pay for it you know like mm. with galleries will it take so you know going through that I think coaching was my tool then to kind of explore the you know the like you say the the part of my life like my love into the next phase launching me into the next phase so it happened kind of combined um, and you got certified just to understand so you got certified as a coach and you started uh, coaching as a as sort of a, yes. as a so professional I really was working Yes, work, working. I enjoyed working with women. So mentoring, um, you know, women was, that was my piece. So I enjoyed that piece. And I think that was bringing, I think it was uh, also, I think that was the piece that I struggled with most, hmm. being able to, you know, reach my potential and my self-limiting beliefs. And I said, yes, you know, you don't have to do it everything. You do what you do best. And kind of, to me, that felt like logical. Hmm. So it was growing myself parallelly as I help others grow hmm. um, or reach their potential. That was for me, you know, uh, the way I, it worked out. And um <laughs> And more transitions came. So we went back to Bombay again um, with this time a third child. 
and you know the the challenges become became even more but i think because i had started my coaching career and my um and my art career in a way where i had had my first exhibition in hong kong um i feel like i had like more hmm. you know kind of trajectory so i was like i am determined to continue my art and uh, i think uh, even bhavtosh was able to sense wow like she can she can paint uh, <laughs> so for the first time when we moved in i had like been i had i was able to in you know build in a space for my art studio it was a Lovely. small place but you know i still have i i had a space there where i could kind of go in i remember whether nikita was well and well i would you know take her in my um you know i would i would pick her up and i would paint if that was the day it was my painting day so i feel like you know i was very determined with no matter what to continue my art and i think coaching was difficult again the hmm. the context had changed and i think it everywhere you build you know you have to uh, i think dj you understand that by of because course. every place you have to kind of kind of grow yourself you have to prove yourself and then when you move you're like you've lost all of that so i was in that process and this time something beautiful happened is that um uh i met with two young gentlemen who wanted to start um something in education uh, because mm-hmm. i was very interested like i had been connected through my past experience with um, you know akanksha teach for india and yes. through that network i got to meet uh, my uh, uh my partner who's working on on the education front mm-hmm. so i was it then i you know that's where it was a separate journey that started on um exploring uh the social enterprise in my life where you know we not not only did uh you know we invest but i invested a whole lot of my time and my energy into um zaya um mm-hmm. which basically a non uh, it was a for profit social enterprise where we we wanted to improve the education platform that is you know provided to public schools and uh you know the the private the low cost private schools where mm-hmm. we said you know you have the teachers who may not have the training but will give the tools uh, you know online you know like tools which uh, could uh, could be provided to you where you just go and implement the content and so i think uh, it was fascinating and i think i was i was very i think it was a bit ahead of its time if it was during covid or i think i think it just it was just it sounds It sounds a bit like what our friend uh, Sumit Mehta does, right? Sending. Yes, he did meet Sumit Mehta. So I did meet Sumit Mehta. You know, at a very early stage, you can almost imagine right. this was. I'm talking about it in um, uh, 2012, 20. You know, so it's like really long time ago, more than 10 years ago. So yes, so it was it was a it was a difficult, a very different, but a very fulfilling journey of you know looking at something that I had never done before. So hmm. I think what the piece i took away from it is that uh even though it was financially it may not have been fulfilling but it was it gave me a immense energy and and that that idea that i can work on something new which i hmm. did i may not have done before so kind of that hmm. strength hmm um, so yeah zaya also you know kind of um i moved then next to uh, new york and um, kind of zaya continued for a little while but oh i i there missed that there was a singapore that. in the middle right no there was a hong kong again in the middle correct correct so when that was moved to sanford right yes yes so bunstein bunstein happened and so he was in uh, he was in we were in hong kong for another four years yes so uh, that was again me going back to my art and a bit you know to my you know coaching i continued to you know do work with zaya so i would travel back to mumbai but mm. it was getting harder mm. to uh, you know to work out of hong kong so mm. so that was so i think the the transitions kind of um gave me a chance to um i think restart but at the same time it was hard because i had to keep peddling you know finding that network of friends 
to support myself and the children. And kind of that was itself a whole load of work, right? Because every time, you know, Bhavtosh would plug in into the same workplace. So it was it was pretty comfortable or easier for him. But it was me and the kids who had to kind of find our, you know, what are who are the children they're going to hang out with, you know, who are the who are the friends that we're going to be live? Where where are we going to live? How are we going to make our current living comfortable, happy, you know? And uh, so that was that that task was on me because oh, you are the person who's who's more outgoing, or you're the person who's at home. So mm. that was a part, and I don't think so. I did it with. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't do it with resentment, but I mm. think it it was uh, something that I had to, you know, take on. Mm. Um, and I okay. guess looking back, that just helped me kind of connect with people from, you know, like different, um, you know, different cultures and understanding nuances. So, you know, living in a, it kind of groomed me to live in a, to adopt another home where mm. I wasn't be out of my comfort zone so hmm. yeah I think something good came out of it because I'm not somebody who would who would like to be isolated I traveled a lot by the way that was one phase I I traveled a lot by myself that's something that my kids had support at home Bhavtosh was there was one year where he did not have a job so you know the option was he asked he I asked him if he wanted to travel he was like no you travel so I was like okay um so I, I did a lot of traveling in Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia. I went to Europe. Um, so I, I met, you know, like my family who was, you know, so so I kind of used that opportunity to pour it back into my art again. So I had a few more exhibitions in Hong Kong. So kind of it worked out in a way. Of course. In, no, I think you, the- make it, you make it sound easy, Shoma. But I think clearly, when I, I take away two, three strands, right? One is I think having... Art uh, as a, maybe if I may say, harness when you're climbing. You know, whenever you slip, you've got a harness that holds you and ensures that you don't slip. I think that's, that's, and I think it sort of played different roles maybe in your childhood to your working life to when you moved to Hong Kong, to New York. So in a way, it's fascinating how that's been a consistent thread and it's taken different shapes. Yeah. Clearly, there's an element of making a difference beyond your family and beyond your work, the Zaya piece, uh, uh, Clearly, there's an element of uh, reskilling and reinvention. Let's say whether it was the coaching or even the uh, the the current. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the the coursework you had to do to get yeah. to the current situation you're in? Yes. So I think it's interesting that um, um, you know there was a. I feel like I have always believed in um, planning. I know that life just kept throwing in a lot of, you know, like I would say um, uncertainties and a lot of um, googlies at us. However, I think what happened was the reason I'm talking about planning is that um, since I was not working in a professional um, kind of structured life, I think it became much more important. So um, I started planning my life across like five, six segments. And I think since I have all of those, uh, DJ, and, you know, all my planning across different different uh, segments that I would look at them and, you know, like, what do I want to do this year? And I see that uh, since 2014, I have a trend of that. And I remember 2019, you know, I had written somewhere that I had been exposed to art coaching. And I said, hmm, you know, if I, I can... Can now that I have come to a crossroad when I moved to New York, like, do I go back to my MBA? Do I go back to my social enterprise? Or do I take my art and, you know, kind of coaching somewhere? And I got to, uh, you know, kind of, I read the, you know, about art therapy. And basically, I think what I thought it was a lot of art, what I really saw is that it is psychotherapy. So basically, the whole coursework is uh, is training you with the theories and with you know the 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 knowledge of making you a counselor. So it has the skills, you know, all the knowledge, and also the art was you know a part of a, in the toolbox. And all the internships 
were were throwing you into different either whether you know it's like different segments age segments so i've worked with um with you know children in new york schools i have worked with uh, elderly in italy with alzheimers uh, that was my summer summer internship i've worked with you know people with medical disorders like lupus and uh, multiple sclerosis um parkinson's disease um and with substance use so it gave me like this whole flavor of i was like wow this is like intense so as i was going slowly into it i was also realizing as it scaffolded that what art could do and where it could uh, you know take me so the the coursework was all about you know kind of preparing the groundwork for for it so uh, i think the hardest was writing a thesis about one of my clients um and connecting each dot it was it was to me the hardest part writing a thesis but at the same time you know kind of um connecting all the dots in you know what really was making sense in the um in so i don't know dj if that's what you wanted to hear but no, no, i think I it was pretty intense uh, you know a sex credit course at this with 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 holding on to the you know your family your social of life you 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 made a transition into a whole way of living in the west you know your health has dropped you you have to drive everywhere you're like an uber driver for your children um i think what has i have to you know talk about the transition that bhavtosh was making hmm. i think he became my support and hmm. i think there was a whole transition that was happening for bhavtosh and the children as well hmm. so i th- say say um, more about that i think uh, maybe if i had to uh, further uh, add i noticed that uh, you know if i if i may say women who probably play the enabling role in families where the maybe the primary if i may say the commercial engine is the spouse i notice that often you know the the spouse need let's say in this case you one has to play a little bit of a proactive role in seeking support otherwise it's very it's very easy to sort of be consumed by the circumstances and sort of be relegated to a if i may say a sort of a back end role right so it's it's sort of yeah. a I noticed that in situations where women in enabling role are thriving like yourself if I may it's there's an element of uh, almost like a, I mean negotiation seems like a very clinical or a very cold word it's a series of conversations it sometimes doesn't happen automatically i wonder what's yeah. your experience on that front i think you're so right on that and i feel like it's a it's almost like one aspect negotiation the other aspect you know your own letting go of how you think it's a perfect way of doing things mm. and mm. i think i saw parts of it as and again it's a process i feel like the years when i traveled a lot um you know i think bhavtosh said like how difficult can it be like you know i have help at home and you know the boys have a routine and i think that's the first time he realized that what it he was so empathetic when i mm. would when i was i was not there as to what it really takes even with help to kind to of keep it put together <laughs> it, put, put it together so i think um for me it was like when i travel i am so much in the present i'm not making each call have the kids at 8 mm. have they gone like have they attended so i am absolutely detached mm. um and that has taken some time because if i did give a call and said you know i said why did you give pizza or why did you make fries is like i kept them alive so that was something that i had getting used to mm. that it okay you mm. know so said if you want it you know my way you know then you have to let it be or you come and do it so mm. i think bhavtosh bhavtosh was very very clear about making it uh you know for me you know that if he wants it to be happening in a certain way then i need to let go of so i think he I was training me i was you know like the situation was training him and when we came to the us i think there was because uh, as you already know dj you know work you living here is so different from mm-hmm. you know being in asia uh, and i think we were pretty spoiled mm-hmm. um i think but one thing that we had fundamental Uh, fundamentally decided was that we're not going to be um 
we don't have a lot of like um expectations that you know it's going to be exactly the same as we had but we knew that we needed help and we mm. needed we needed our cooking situation to be taken care of mm -hmm. and and i think you i think you cannot be good at everything i think that you have a friend of mine says this all the time you have to suck at something and for me i had decided early on i have to give up on the ability to make like four meals a day for my children on the table so i i put it together but that's something that i get help on so i Understood. did that even in the us so that kind of helped me in having basic help and then on mm. top of it kind of keep everything running together smoothly and bhavtosh was absolutely on board with it mm. you know he kind of um we continue to be able to you know while i'm moving into this new life where i am not there in the evenings because i work with children i'm not there in the evenings uh, when the kids come back from school because mm. i'm working with children and i work on a weekend so mm. it's a, it's a very intense um you know role where we are both supporting each other the days when he has to go for work i am you know at home so it's like um we it's like a great partnership that we are building and that's the only way i feel like it can work lovely lovely and, constant negotiation it doesn't it's not as as cool as it sound it's there of course times. of course of course <laughs> <we do have. laughs> the ball has dropped <laughs> so. i don't know i think uh, completely i think but the point is at least uh, taking a stab at having the conversation right have the conversation and and see yes. where it goes right it may not be and clean it, it, it is so messy it's a process it's process it's a process and it's a it's a process of readjustment managing expectations setting expectations setting boundaries uh um i think the the one piece i'm curious about shoma is just uh you know you started out when I mean, you spoke about your early years you spoke about the need for commercial independence uh i am a city bank then kids happened then transitions happened then art talk, talk to me about maybe the how your aspirations have evolved over time and when i say aspirations i'm not just talking about aspirations from a if i may say just from a work or a professional lens but just as a human being can you just talk uh, talk a little bit about how that's sort of taken shape over time mm -hmm. i'm just thinking about it um how the aspiration has moved on mm. is there anything that you feel like is there a is there anything that you have observed as over the years that you know people's aspirations you know kind of change or evolve hmm i'm feeling let me talk about let me talk about myself right uh, hmm. let's make it specific see i think when we when we were on campus initial years it was a little bit about you know however narrow it might sound there was a certain academic orientation to aspiration it would be to say i want to study in these kinds of places i want to get these kinds of grades initial years in consulting whether i would say kpmg mckinsey or even agon center i would say i want to become a partner i want to do this you know there's an element of that being the primary definition i would say cut to today i think there's an element of i think what i realize i derive energy from is a sense of balance and a sense of harmony across the different elements of life mm -hmm. so to me you know that's to me is personally feels more important than let's say building a large organization sometimes when people talk about impact or impact at scale i see a certain sense of restlessness and a certain sense of desire ki yaar you know we have this huge problem and i see uh, and i think it's healthy energy right that people are pouring into making a difference in my case i feel my aspiration is to be a little more balanced uh, be happy just ensure that i'm a decent husband uh, you know father son uh get good at what i do i think excellence is another thing that sort of i aspire to getting really good at what i do so i i would say that's the shape of my aspiration i would say the I, the one that i hear now yeah i think mm. you put it so beautifully i was i was feeling a little uh you know stumped at what really because mm. i feel like um you know i i feel like when it was you know at ima i felt like i was like bursting forth with aspiration you know like you know in terms of the careers you you know you want to kind of 
go climb the ladder you mm. know you want different roles and you know like every two years you wanted um i would say you would you would want your promotion you know and you were worried about like you know am i am i doing well to kind of get the next role and so i think the initial few years i think a lot of focus and energy was in in success in mm. those terms you know like the job roles that you got the promotion that you got the money that you made you know um so i think that was more of the the it was very financially and um yeah it was driven even that way i think the later years i felt like it was more when we were we started transitioning and i kind of um i was no longer in a professional role i think for me it was it was how do i keep myself you know kind of relevant hmm you know kind of me peace hmm. when i was drowned in you know the transitions of uh the countries finding home finding you know kind of getting the, the kids ready for school or you know kind of taking them you know here just keeping them active and um you know engaged and you know like you know teaching them being for you know being you know the available mother so all of that i think um it was something that was i was primarily a mother for most years Hmm. and everything else revolved around you know whatever little time i would get when they were in school was you know kind of what do i you know like how do i find so i would i was always i think in the in the dynamics of raising children and you know living in in a different country you know you have to kind of um you have to you know keep keep in this uh, you know new environment you keep looking at every day is a challenge so sure. i think I, there was no i don't think so i found a lot of continuity mm. um i tried different things and so i think there was there was i enjoyed a revel in the novelty of of those mm. things um for me the i would say for me personally what was the um there was a lot that focus that went into the health part mm. of it as an option um and my my own art and spirituality kind of kicked in more as to how do i you know keep myself grounded mm. um, so much was happening you know in in the um and i and i loved if i may come in i loved what you said uh, somewhere a few minutes back right uh, that uh, there wasn't resentment you know i find that powerful because in a way maybe you could argue a lot of situation a lot of transitions happened which was probably a lot more disruptive to you and the kids than maybe it was for bhavtosh because in a way he was either moving within the same organization or there was a sort of a clear business case for his move but yeah. i think not being resentful and sort of having a sense of agency even amidst this is not is is it's not natural right it, it takes work to get there no i think dj i don't think so i can give myself credit for so much of benign mm. <laughs> you know i would say forgiveness i don't i can't because i think um i think there have been times when i would be very resentful hmm. but i you know i would i would feel like you know my career didn't go anywhere like i'm the hmm. one stuck and you know all all hmm. those kind of thoughts or if i would meet you know batchmates or you know especially you know women who are doing very well in their career and they feel settled it hmm. would definitely hurt me hmm. <laughs> so hmm. i can't i really cannot kind hmm. of say that that was absolutely the you know the magnanimity that mm. i approach that i took so <laughs> i it was a process then i um, respect the candor right <laughs> shoma and i think maybe just a pause here uh, given your experiences uh, with balancing career uh, let's say geographical moves and kids any you know if 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 you were to talk to a woman coming out of ima today um any headline uh, pieces of thought you want to equip her with as as she sort of gets into the world of work i think you know i feel like when you when you come out of um ima i think you have i i think i'm speaking from myself again i think it's very unidirectional the mm. aspect as you have rightly pointed out it's mm. like how do i make you know how do i make myself establish myself in the financial 
you know, and, you know, in terms of like the career growth and all of that. I think over life, when I look back, do I regret any of that? I don't think so. But I feel like I feel I feel gratitude every moment while I'm saying this, because I feel like each part of that was an experience that that kind of combined and added and kind of flowed into where I am right now. Mm. But mm. I think keeping an keeping an eye on, I think self care and growth, and kind of like I said, even though I didn't have a job, kind of keeping an eye on different aspects. Whether you know, like I said, planning about every year, it was like my marker. You know, I don't know why it is a year, but it's just. And this is of the something year. you do at the beginning of the year, as sort of the New Year resolution, as we say. I have, I yes, I'm one of, one of those who wow. will every year, like since I think I can, I have a book that I write every year since 2014. I have each uh, planning of each uh, year across different aspects that I, you know, I'm very, I feel like that is something that has helped me, you know, whether it's my, whatever my, whatever I felt it was my professional, like focus is my children and spouse, uh, art has always kind of, you know, like the friends and family and, you know, health and spiritual travel, all of that are, the, are different balls that mm. I just mm. like the same balls have to be, you know, caught in the air. So I feel like, Suddenly, the the life is no longer just unidimensional. You are, you know, you are growing in different mm. aspects. Mm. So I felt like that growth helped me kind of propel forward. But no mm. matter what the challenges are, because whether you like it or not, I feel like I could not have dropped the the children or the spouse or the home, you know, or the travel, any of those balls at but I couldn't have them up at, you know, up in the air at all times. Mm. But I think the the child and the spouse and your home, that it becomes your fundamental, I would say. Um, the glass balls, right? The glass yes. balls that you can't drop. The glass balls. They are the glass balls. So, be, you know, that can't be dropped ever. Yeah. So, I think everything else you kind of, you know, as you get efficient with it or, you know, your children grow up, they don't need mm. you physically as much more because you're not physically exhausted running around with them but you have, have to be emotionally available mm. uh, when mm. you want to come and talk so i think the the you as a parent you have to be changing so the other thing is that if you don't grow yourself spiritually and you're not increasing your awareness life's complexity does not you know continue to reduce Mm. And can you talk you a bit more? To... You've mentioned spirituality two, three times. What does spiritual growth mean to you? Can you talk a little bit about what, uh, how, how you approach that? So I think for me, it means um, spending time with yourself. Like mm. I have said that that has increased a lot. Uh, I do meditate, um, you know, every day, uh, if, you know, setting an intention in the morning if I can you know, having an afternoon meditation and before sleep. I feel wow. like it has helped kind of, and it's some days it's possible, some days it's not. But I feel like the, over the last, I would say 20 plus years, that has been another harness, as you put it. It's mm. It has been my harness to kind of, uh, you know, kind of think about. And I think the, when they say that, you know the the resources are inside you and you kind of have to it's a mm. combination the resources are inside you and then it says you know this is something that you work on or this is i think it kind of works the inside outside combination has helped me work lovely and you briefly touched upon friends and family right i think clearly we've spoken about family enough uh, can you talk a little bit about Let's say just relationships, right? Whether it's in the context of exploring opportunities or whether it's just in the context of revitalizing oneself. Can you talk a little bit about how uh, how you sort of, uh, you know, uh, prioritize that or how you've sort of dealt with that as, as life has unfolded? Yeah. Uh, DJ, I was just wondering that as I was going through this long thread of conversation, hmm. I missed the piece where what is aspiration now? Sure. So is, if well, I could... And let's then, let's talk about that of course so i think that since you made me think about this whole aspiration 
um i it's 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 actually quite um uh, significant piece for for me i feel like for me the aspiration now has become to really look at life in a more broad based and like you said the balance hmm. and i think i i am in the picture a little more than i hmm. was like for me being you know kind of healthy um you know mentally grounded and you know kind of in that peaceful zone has really significantly changed hmm. uh, you know um and that kind of supports you, you know how my family is and i feel like i'm also aspiration of growing myself not just in that space is also being able to have the space as a conduit to hold more discomfort pain hmm. just myself for my family and friends but also for my clients hmm. so i feel like that it's almost like how am i growing myself as a vessel my aspiration to grow myself as a vessel for this whole you know as a catalyst and as a campaigner i think that's how i i i have seen myself in the last few years so beautiful so i think a beautiful visual i mean as a painter clearly yeah <laughs> i guess <laughs> you think in images i i love it yes. just holding the space uh, and sort of in a way being that if i may shock absorber for yes. the family for the clients right. and sort of the space creating the space uh, for for spiritual growth for you and for for the client in that journey right i think that uh, that's that's what my my connection um you know with with whether i'm like you said about you know Uh, connections you know matter to me whether it's the connection with my inside connection with my children with you mm. know so mm. that really that really fires me mm. as, as much um and i think um there is a plaque which i have always kept in front of me since i was in my young 20s it's uh, it's been kind of the north star remember we talked talked about dj's like it says to laugh often and much to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children to leave the world a bit better to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived that to have succeeded i feel like i am bringing that aspiration still holds true and you know in light and i feel like when i look at it i feel like i'm going towards that north star so aspiration is like to, you know kind of stick to that fascinating it sort of sometimes it's just uh the simple words are immensely clarifying right it's uh, it's nothing lofty right it's just uh, one life breathed easy is yes. uh, mm. and i think simplifying life dj i think mm. aspiration is now just simplifying life mm. so mm. i think life is really to be lived so i think i'm um, that's what i i feel like that's where i feel much more you know uh, i would say balance and there are times when you <laughs> get this but kind of keeping that regular routine to kind of whether like i said whether it's your spiritual practice art friends that that kind of you know my family that that kind of keep keep that in the glass balls in correct in and i air. think if i may build on that shoma i think one is sort of not losing sight of what the glass balls are as you said but what i find also fascinating is you know just ensuring that while you're sort of pouring you know your energies into the big the big pieces you're not losing sight or you're not losing touch with those small things and just sort of finding a way of just keeping nourishing it mm. however small it is right for example art the sense i get was sort of maybe playing the supporting role for a while uh, when mm. kids kids were front but now in a way uh, you sort of kept enough in touch with it for it to reappear uh, in a little more if i may say uh, prominent prominent role so i think that, that i take that away as well not to you know not to completely lose touch i think there's something to be said about continuity uh yeah. and sort of having that alive somewhere in some corner of your heart for yeah. it to reemerge uh sometime in the future yeah and that's the acceptance that there will everything will not happen all the time that's hmm. just said you have to like you know <laughs> you know one thing is is going to be less but i think keeping that eye on there's a there's a concept central concept in art therapy which i really love um mm-hmm. which is 
that of a thermostat in your, you know, kind of treatment. When you get, you know, too restricted, you know, and I know that you love the flow aspect. When you get too restricted, how do you use the mediums to loosen you up? And yeah. when you are too dysregulated and undone, how does how what do you bring in to ground and center you? So I feel like that duality is going to be always playing in. And as they say that, you know, when you are when you do your ECG, it's mm. not meant to be like this. You know, it's, it's an, like it's an head, range. Right? It's, an so range. It's, that, it's that range that where do you keep that? You keep going up and down and being more aware of that. So I feel like the aspiration is to be more aware, aware mm. and you know, kind of keep that thermostat going. I love the thermostat. And, uh, and the <laughs> acceptance is that it is going to go. It is going to go here and there. All it the does time. fluctuate. That's, Correct. That's not a huh, straight line is not the objective, right? But sort of keep it within bounds, yeah. uh, reasonable bounds. You know, I use thermostat yeah. in the context of uh, when people ask me, how many people do you work with? How do you think about effort? I just say, yeah, broadly, it's a thermostat. You know, if there's too much, when I, when I sort of, the busyness gets out of hand, I yes. cool off and I say no to work. Uh, it's a sort of just as long as it's broadly within the band, right? I think it's sort of, uh, but it's never a straight line. I think that that's, uh, that, that point is uh, well taken. I think we were yeah. briefly talking about relationships when you sort of went back to aspiration. Do you want to sort of touch upon that? And then maybe yes. I wanted to explore a couple of other things. Yeah, I think, you know, I feel like the relationships, um, I have to talk about my my parents to begin with. Mm. And I mm that that's a relationship that um i feel like i have i have had to work on because mm. as i've gone through different phases with that you know as a as a rebel teenager i was really horrible in the in my own ways you know where i have completely cut off relationships and all that so almost like going back to rebuilding some of that and i can't say they're whether they're optimal or not but i have worked on the relationship mm. to you know kind of to let go of some of the resentment that i mm. held and um and so i think there is there's a whole lot of work that it if i did not do it i could not have reached at this stage in life mm. and so it mm. was an important difficult piece but i think that's something that i worked on and did that, um, if I may, did that require uh, seeking help uh, or was it sort of uh, yes. doing I it still, on your own? So to, to give you perspective, like if I, when I go in therapy again, it's something that I would, I have, I have always used coaching even to work mm -hmm. on my relationship, but more, I think as my the spiritual journey, but I think I want to actively use therapy to kind of go and see what really is sometimes you know i feel like i've become a little bit more philosophical where i, I believe in you know the the past the the reasons why it happened so i'm kind of wanting to address some of that so yes work it's it's a continuous work that needs to kind of to repair and i can't even say thrive at this point mm. in time yeah mm. Mm. got it so i think you were talking about relationships you started with parents I was curious, uh, as as see clearly, family. We've spoken about uh, kids, bhaktovish parents. Um, I'm curious about how uh, you know, just a uh, you know, you've moved geographies, and at least I believe that you know, friendships and relationships are required. And I think there's enough research about the Japanese as well, right? The the ones that are thriving. Finally, uh, people say that uh, good, healthy relationships are key, uh, whether it's friends or family. Do you want to shine the light on how you sort of made space for that, uh, despite the the sort of the demands of life? Yeah, um, I feel that, DJ, I can't say enough about you know building relationships. I think, um, I feel like for both me and Bhavtosh, that's something that we both believe in, and mm. I think it was challenging because we moved a lot, but I felt like. As we kept going to different places, life gave us opportunity to meet with with different people, whether, you know, from aspects of, um, you know, professional or, you know, just, you know, friends, our, our kids, uh, parents. Um, and so different groups, my, my friends who I met through coaching, art. So the circles, different circles we have met. Um, and people are constantly moving, especially because... Um, Hong Kong is that kind of a place where mm. it's almost like a 
a platform. And flux. Um, mm. It's a lot of flux. I feel like uh, over the years, the way I have, I, I still have my childhood friend who is my best friend. I have gone, visited her. We have traveled together now. So I feel like there's a phase when you will, you know, it's tough and you may have dropped, but I have gone back seeking, mm. Mm. Um, you know, kind of rekindling that relationship. Mm. And mm. some some friendship, if they are deep, you know, you know that that it's you connect exactly where you have started. And even friends from, you know, my college or, uh, you know, I'm so there are different groups. My uh, mentor, my ex boss, she still remains my very good friend. I've traveled with her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my ex colleagues, I stay in touch with, you know, few who really mattered. And, you know, they sparked that, um, uh, you know, I would say that that joy. I have not let them, uh, you know, my neighbors from Hong Kong and friends from Hong Kong. Um, and I feel like I have traveled back to visit them, especially if it's Mumbai or Hong Kong. I have traveled back and reconnected. I feel like since I live in New York, the world travels through New mm, York. Mm. So I feel like I get an opportunity to meet if they are professional, you know, from professional life, they are coming here for work. We make the opportunity and the time, both of us, to mm. meet friends. Um, if if we are, you know, if there, and, and we are at that stage where children are coming to study in yes. the US. So parents are coming here. So we don't lose that opportunity. And even during weekdays, it's been, you know, how tough it is. But we have we have made that uh, opportunity to meet them. If not, I think we, bo I, I say we because I see both of us doing it, Bhaktosh and me. Mm. Mm. Uh, we connect, we talk over the phone. So I feel like I may not be, you know, in different time in different time zones. Morning is the time I can touch base with friends from Hong Kong, mm. India, you know, Singapore. So it's like that time zone. And I feel like if there are friends that I need to meet in the US, then it's like later. But I feel like at least a call mm. and when possible to meet. Um, I think that's something that I have connected. I have traveled to meet friends. And when I do travel, I make it a point to meet them I think they I I get I personally get a lot of um joy mm. a lot of a lot of um I would say nourishment from Got from it. these relationships and they're also my support you know in terms of um I would say the the womanhood and the sisterhood that has helped me especially during my you know young mother days when you really need it so I kind of have I I haven't forgotten that phase and that that's when I need a lot of support I feel and I've kept in touch with them. Got yeah, it. I have not tried to do it alone. If there's a problem, I I do seek advice and support. I have friends who range from my classmates who are you know young twenties to I have my my really wonderful friend who helped me move to this country because she was moving to uh, she's in her 70s so wow you know, i have like at every stage in life i can i can i have friends who have been through that stage and what it is like um lovely. that helps lovely if i may um uh, you know you've you've been through multiple transitions if we specifically shine the light shoma on just that sort of if i may rediscovering the flavor right we spoke about the various elements of flavor so far but if you just want to sort of uh, maybe shine the light on the first three to six months in each of these transitions, sometimes that can be the hard part, right? I think where there's just so much in flow. What have you learned about just maybe this process of rediscovery as, as you transition? Of course, transition is not just geographical transition, but even change of context with kids. Let's say one child going to college and maybe soon all kids in college. I guess there are different ways of looking at transitions. But any, any reflections on uh, you know, if you once again had to talk to somebody embarking on this journey uh, straight, just coming out of college today, what would you say? What are the one or two things that you know you've learned through this phase of uh, rediscovering the flavor as 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 life has unfolded? Hmm. Hmm. That's that's a very broad. Like, what is what's some of the key things in hmm. rediscovering? 
and it's and it's messy right it's not that there's one one clean i was just curious if there's any you know uh, uh you know let me let me again once again maybe share, start with an example right uh, you know when i moved to uh, india in the context of my father's cancer treatment in 2008 you know it was a now when i look back at that time i was overwhelmed and it took me a while uh, i just sort of went with the flow and then eventually we decided to, he passed away in a few months and we decided to stay back in india but now when i at least as i go through the journey i realize that you know i shouldn't jump into decision making too quickly sometimes just let the situation play out and the answer often emerges over time you know i've sort of i've started believing in uh, sometimes time being a friend in terms of just you know the answer emerging rather than trying to muscle my way into an answer if that makes sense so that's something that i've learned through a few situations where you know you just have to some there's no substitute to slow cooking your yeah. way to a to an outcome there's no brute force approach that could work but i was just curious if if uh, if you if you have any reflections on this for me um it's it's a very interesting question it's making me think but i feel like my fallback is um what has art taught me and i feel like mm. through art process is what i feel like i have learned life mm. um and for me it's like you know there's like you said that you know there's an instant validation you need in the social media and you know with this they show you you know how you complete a picture with a click of a and it's very frustrating <laughs> for me i feel like you know that's not true they don't show the messiness of the the process mm. and i feel like the process is where you have to learn to have fun and expand yourself in in staying in that process you know like i feel like and that's where you have to relinquish the idea of a perfect picture mm. and actually that's something that i work with the children you know and i think part of my work is letting go of that idea of what a perfect picture is i think we live in a very judgmental um just this is a generation we just have to have a lot of um i would say uh, you know we 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 are very judge quick to judge hmm. and have opinions i feel like that's something that is actually hindering the growth and the process of hmm. you know discovery and the curiosity hmm. i feel like hmm. that's what i have learned to relinquish some of that perfect picture idea hmm. and like some of the things that have worked for me is baby steps just mm. stroke at a time and mm. painting emerges it is not something that i had so planning is a part of it i will mm. never say for me that has been of course a central idea to go uh, you know about it but i feel like life is becoming more and more uncertain mm. you know like as in during covid when i picked up the watercolors and i made my you know 100 days painting that was a way of actually dealing with my my anxiety and the stress that was every day every moment it would build and for mm. me the watercolors you know experimenting with watercolors every day taught me that you're kind of relinquishing control mm. you know you're you're kind of embracing that that imperfection you know of the colors that has just just appeared on the paper and you're making it a part of your plan mm. you know and, and i feel like that's where is that is the crux of growth is that mm. it is not in the predetermined plan but in accepting the unplanned with you know with with what you are you know we're planning and um happy accidents meet mm. so i think that is really it's not that happens the first day i don't think that happens so it's like to me that is what has helped mm. that going with planning but you know being flexible and trying and being curious as to what is what is being thrown at you and i feel like that trust i think is it's also now the trust in the universe is growing a, a bit more hmm. uh, so i think i think keep that struggle of of the dance of the creation like you know you need a little tension they say in the art and you know you have to uh, you have to kind of 
come with certain thing that you want and something happens that 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 struggle is 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 a part of the plan it's not without you can't do that of without of course so yeah i think Lovely. um A beautiful yeah, uh, Shobha. The, I love one brush stroke at a time and the painting emerges, right? Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Yes. I think uh, that are very, very well said. I think it's and been a very... Change is the only... Hmm. Change is the only constant, really. I know it's it's such a cliched thing, hmm. but I feel like I look back for me, you know, so... And you, uh, that, uh, I think that brings me to one of the things you said in one of our earlier conversations, right? This concept of flow. Life keeps flowing and you need to acknowledge that and sort of you know in a way keep uh, if i may say rowing your boat amidst this flow right it's not a static you might like it or not but it's a, you, you you know it's not things might appear static but life keeps flowing do you want do you want to touch upon that because it's such a you mentioned it in the passing but it stayed with me you know especially as i've been thinking about this notion of finding our flavor as we go through life i think the key element i want to shine the light on is this process of uh, rediscovery it's never a it's not like you found the answer and you stay with it right they just life keeps evolving so did you want to touch upon that yeah i i don't know why i just feel like i you know it's the more i i have gone into art it feels like that's where the uh the flow has you know the flow in the artwork also speaks to me i feel like it's a concept that is true to what happens even in what they say the uh in illness they say that the energy flow where it gets stuck is where um you know your health breaks down so interestingly flow is the only way that you know that you can thrive in so flow for me it's like it's i feel like you don't flow at the same rate mm. or at the same place as well so you know it's like it's like you it's i'm trying to um think about how do you how do you present the flow in your own life um to me the flow is is what you keep looking inward and outward at the same time it's mm -hmm. like you know what is it that makes you happy but also what is you you're in relation to to the outside so you mm -hmm. know like where you are flowing also matters i don't know if that makes sense mm -hmm. when you know when i am flowing you know out of i am versus when i am flowing when i'm flowing out of i am when i am in you know like 20 somethings versus when i'm flowing in new york you know almost about to be 50 it can't be the same of course so, so you know how you blossom in that environment really has to has to be taken into consideration so in this space i feel like the only thing that really helps is the awareness hmm. and the noise outside how you're able to dim to you know kind of be aware and and doing this because i'm thinking of the lotus where hmm. you know it's a beautiful hmm. analogy because it unfurls you know where it will unfurl unfurl anywhere right even hmm. in the most water but you you know it's it's a process because if you keep an eye on the changes of nature you have to see that your life can't be the same so taking stock at any point in time and going from there i think is is what helps in the flow like being mindful of what has changed and i feel like for for me what has helped is like keeping the the five six elements always mm. alive you know kind of checking in Hmm. and i think being kind to myself i would have like you know five six ideas in every block you hmm. know and so many times i would not but you know i would i would you know for example in health i would have like you know a few races to run a few you know treks to do but i would have done a few you know like so for me it just, it's like it's more directional right it's not about taking everything it's, right it just gives yes. you a sense of direction i'm hoping direction. right 
So right. I feel like that that North Star is important. Hmm. It's uh, the North Star is to kind of keep going upwards. You're not going to be like, you know, touching every peak. I of think course. that is that is not peak potential. Hmm. Peak potential is like, you know, keeping the surrounding in in mind. You know hmm. what you're able to achieve, but hmm. the journey needs to be upward and hmm. onward. But you kind of, you know, you know, you you have to see that you're flowering from all aspects, mm. Mm. not just one petal opening. You know, that's not how a flower. That's a, really, that's a good visualization, know. yeah, of uh, of full potential, right? Uh, yeah. The whole lotus blossoming and not one petal. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I think uh, if if I may, uh, sort of uh, as we conclude this conversation, Shoma, uh, very inspiring, right? I think just uh, all the way from. The various elements, childhood, uh, how you've sort of, uh, if I may say, navigated through the different emerging contexts. If I were to ask you, I mean, th this conversation, the series of conversations is about talking to people who've taken a stab at playing to full potential, not just sort of unidimensional potential, right? And and we can discuss till the cows come home mm -hmm. on whether we should be on that list, you should be on that list, I should be on the list, or, you know, who should be on that list. But I think let's let's leave it as uh, people who are striving to to lead up to sort of uh, to blossom like a full lotus any uh, concluding thoughts on what it takes to 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 take a stab at leading a full life uh, given your lived experience shoma um i i like the word strive a mm. lot mm. i feel like i since you said it it's kind of struck for me and Looking back, I just feel like having a North Star always helps mm. because directionally you want to go in a certain way. Um, I feel like s assessing, you know, I think periodically what is most important. And sometimes you will have some and relinquishing that, you know, that yes. perfect idea that it has to be a certain way because it has worked for somebody else. Um I think that is that is you know a little um uh flawed and fourthly I feel like support remember mm. that you know you have to be support to somebody else to gain the support back so that support whether you are supporting somebody and then you know you can you have the confidence and the relationship to ask that support back so creating those blocks of support Lovely. It's a wonderful conversation, Shoma. Uh, lots to, I'm going to sort of, you know, this has left me with a lot to mull over. And I'm sure hopefully the listeners that tune into this will 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 seek inspiration and seek value with some of the things that we've discussed. But thank you so much for your time and, you. and for You for have sharing. made me think so much. Like, I feel like <laughs> I've had a good, good um, you know, review of my my life and kind of thinking what next for me but i think thank and you it's, uh, the feeling is mutual shoma thank you so much thank you so much you. i hope you found the conversation with shoma purposeful i really loved the point she makes about life being like a lotus where multiple petals need to unfurl simultaneously for the life to be beautiful if you have a moment do check out her article on linkedin be hag scary baby steps or not. This was something that she wrote in 2017, but is extremely relevant even today. I'll add a link to the article in the description section of the video. Shoma is one of the six people we've profiled as part of the Flavorful Life series. Do tune into the other five if this piques your curiosity. And if you want deeper insights on doing the inner work, making trade-offs, being agile as life context evolves, and rediscovering your flavor as you go through your journey, do consider picking up the book, Play to Potential. The link to where you can find the book is available in the description section. I hope you'll find it useful. Thank you.